All right, this is part two of the old school test gear I got from the junkyard. This guy is an old uh, military frequency meter. It's got a built-in little oscilloscope screen, uh, oven heater for a built-in crystal oscillator. But this thing is just absolutely massive. In the bottom, it's got a calibration book, which is metal bound. But this thing is just too big, I can't keep it, so I'm going to have to tear it down and see what's inside. But it's obviously been stored in a quite uh, wet environment. The power switch is absolutely crusty. I couldn't get off some of these uh, knobs on the front because the set screws are rusted or just it's like fused in there. I can't even see that if there's a set screw or not. But I've already took, taken the case off. Everything is very neatly organized into like separate modules so that they can be removed and serviced. All the tubes are shielded. There's a whole block of test points up on top. Power supply section in the middle there. Connectors. I'll do the section first. Oh man, those capacitors are nasty. signal meter there. Not too much circuitry in there. That might, might make a neat module to try and turn into one of those scope clocks or something. This guy here is the oven stabilized crystal oscillator. And there it goes. And that guy right there is your crystal. Nice and tidy. Got like panel mounted capacitors. Little tuning capacitor. Cool. These big metal cans. I guess they're probably tuned tunable filters. Mm. All kinds of little tubes. Mostly small signal stuff. Probably the only bigger tubes are going to be in the power supply. Looks like these are mostly just triodes. screws on that one.
More canned capacitors. Got some inductors over there. That's a heck of a reefer switch. Circuit board. Looks like there's some big uh, central buses running down the middle. It looks like it has a built-in bleed resistor or something. Bernal and Company. 50k ohm input, 680k ohm output. Transformer, I suppose. Oh, these are interesting. Capacitors, it looks like. Very strange. Ah, look at all the tuning adjustments. Looks like three more modules to go, but... Ah. Yep, that's heavy. That was like the metal can package transformers. All that appears this guy is just two inductors. Let's see, what does that say? 100 to 2000 hertz ripple frequency, 120 milliamps DC. Uh, 0.44 ohms DC. 300 volts DC to ground. Oh, tick grid, GRD. Yeah. 5Y3, it's probably just a rectifier. 6Y6. <laughs> this one's like bolted in. Big filter caps. Yeah, look at all the taps on the transformer. Huh, that's interesting. Ah, check that out. Voltage selector. Neat. Yep. Well, I think that may be the single largest variable air capacitor I've ever seen. It's hard to see in the video. Now you can see inside there. And it's one huge multi-gang variable capacitor. Nice gear train in the front for all the dials. Band selector. And then the actual tuning. Yeah, that, that's trashed from me hitting it with the hammer. More adjustments. these funky uh, capacitors. All right, underside. That one's actually sealed. Let's take a look. All right. There's a good bit going on in there. Lots of inductors. I like the vertical uh, resistors there. Big inductor down there, tuning cap. Got 
one more module to go. Just got done removing all like 20 screws holding this cover on. Now that's a heavy duty tuning capacitor. see down in there but there's a worm drive gear for the tuning capacitor I guess there's more stuff in that can like there's two feed through points there Interesting. I think that was the input attenuator. So I guess it's just forming a some kind of little small capacitor to reduce the input signal size. Hope you thought that was interesting for a teardown of some much older tech 